you so much, Lisa. Thank you so much to all of our musicians, and we appreciate all who are helping and making this live streaming production possible. We greatly appreciate your assistance today, and we appreciate each and every one of you being with us. Y'all remember Regis Philbin? Yeah. He passed yes. away just recently, and our thoughts are certainly with the family, but we have fond memories of Regis Philbin, don't we? Yeah. We remember him as the host of uh, talk shows and being that entertainer who really invited us to laugh and encourage us to just remember some key words and statements such as, is that your final answer? How many remember him from the wonderful TV show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And as the host, he constantly asks, is that your final answer? Wanting to make sure that people spoke with some level of confidence about what they were saying. Are you sure? Are you really feeling confident in this? Because those who answer that question in such a way by saying, yes, this is my final answer, well, they felt just some perfect ease, waiting for those next moments to unfold when he would say, yes, that is the correct answer, that is the right answer. Well, confidence is an important part of our spiritual life. It brings about an ease to us and it helps us just simply relax when we embrace a confidence, a confidence found in knowing a confidence found in true understanding and embracing this wonderful enlightenment that's available to us, embracing this understanding of truth. It just lifts the soul to a place of saying, I am confident and I know God is at work. And that is my final answer. Jesus knew. Jesus knew with great confidence. And as our great way shower teacher, the one who is really unfolding for us the pathway of our life, he constantly exuded this confidence in all aspects of his life. Everything he spoke, he spoke with great assurance and confidence, saying in the very essence of barely, barely I say it to you, or and this is the way it is, or this is the very truth. We spoke about that last Sunday, the power of amen. He spoke with such authority and confidence and he invites us to do the same, to find that inner peace, that inner confidence within us, and assurance that lets us know at all times that God is with us, never leaving us, nor forsaking us. And that which we speak as truth is to be known as something that's unfolding for our lives. He spoke with such confidence about the power within each and every one of us, a power within us. That's right, deep within. So much of our physical world is speaking and addressing to us about thinking about things outside of us. The things that we may reach out to, the things that we may touch, the things and sounds we may hear around us, the things that we may reach out and taste, the things that we may embrace or feel in some way in the physical realm. But the spiritual life is constantly reminding us, go within. And within is where we find so much power to be released in our lives. And how is it released? It's released through the word that we speak. This divine power is released as we speak the words of our desire, speak the words of our intention, speak the words of that which we uh, believe to be true. And that word is operated on by spiritual law. Spiritual law, you know, spiritual law that uh, we look at quite often, we may address the spiritual law of cause and effect. Your word, the spoken word, that power within is released as you speak this word and the law begins to work upon it. That spiritual law of cause and effect begins to unfold. That spiritual law of what you are speaking, what you're sowing, you will reap. That spiritual law that says that which you're putting into action by your belief, is going to be that which you will harvest, that which you will reap. What you think and believe to be true, then is true for you. This spiritual law is within, and it reacts to the words that you're speaking. And it's always at work, always at work. Even if you're not intentionally aware of the spiritual law at work. A lot of times we may be a little bit unconscious, or not conscious of the very uh, words that we're speaking and not realizing that they are enacting the very spiritual law. This spiritual law is so impersonal that it's not thought of as a person by any means, but because that would make it sort of fickle or moody or wavering in truth, but it's this wonderful principle of nature. 
So this spiritual law that you may have been exercising even without even knowing it is bringing forth or manifesting that which you believe to be true, that which you are holding in mind, that which you are speaking audibly into the world. So we find sometimes people say, you know, uh, what a horrible day. What are we speaking? What are we wanting to manifest? A horrible day. Oh, I just feel so horrible. What are you speaking? What are you manifesting? A belief that you feel horrible. You know, when somebody would say, oh, I was just casually speaking. Oh, be careful of the words that we speak because they have power and they're bringing forth the power from within our lives. Just know that this spiritual law, you can use it wisely or quite often we may use it unwisely. We create sometimes discord in our lives by the uh, ignorance of not understanding the power of this spiritual life and spiritual law at work. Because we, often we may create discord when we're really wanting to create harmony. Often we may want to be creating a world of unity and we create a world of division because we're not thinking about what we're thinking about. We're not thinking and taking inventory of where are my thoughts going? Where are, what are they embracing and what am I speaking? So you can create for yourself a world of harmony and good and a blessing, or you can create a world of discord and division and failure and lack, because this law works the same either way. Now, Jesus spoke to the disciples and he called to them after they were fishing all night long and their nets were empty. You can imagine the feeling of exhaustion, the feeling and sense of lack in their lives, the feeling of saying, you know, we've been working and laboring so hard and we've captured nothing. And in the early dawn, Jesus told them to cast the same net on the other side and they would receive an abundant catch. Catch, just take that same net and move it to another of the other side of the boat and there would be an amazing abundance for you. This illustrates to us the simple understanding that we may be thinking this way and the power of thought is at work and it's creating all the discord, division, lack, separation that we say, oh, I don't want any of that. Oh, take the same net, take the same thought and think in a new way and embrace and say, wait a minute, I'm gonna cast my net on the other side of the boat. I'm gonna change my thinking to another in another direction and find that this spiritual law that was working, that's been constantly manifesting for me, things that I really don't want, now is working for me. And I am manifesting things that I do want because I'm thinking and speaking in a new way. Oh, I find that great confidence comes to us when we take a look at our thoughts and the words that we're speaking because they are manifesting the power within. Let's be mindful. Let's be looking and addressing the very thoughts that we're thinking and those that we're putting into voice or giving voice to. So the spiritual law, it works for us. You just have to cast it on the other side. Jesus was very confident. He knew. Confident in telling the weary worn disciples who had fished all night that, that in these waters, if you would cast on the other side, there would be abundance for you. He was confident in his belief. And he is this great example of confidence, of great faith. He's our master teacher and way shower. Some may not be familiar with those terms because so often we thought of Jesus as the revelation of God, but we're not really thinking in the context that he is this teacher for our lives. That's why today in our world, so many people of Christianity don't even know the teaching of Jesus. Don't even know how to embrace it or to live it to the fullness and the extent sort of ignored the fact that Jesus is a teacher showing us a pathway, a way for our life, a way of confidence, a way of great faith. We're called then to have this faith that Jesus demonstrated, that Jesus taught, to embrace the very faith of Jesus is our spiritual work, to embrace it with such level of confidence. This I know to be true. Because every teacher would want his students to come to a level of knowledge and of understanding that is a confidence in knowing of the material that the teacher has been sharing. I've never known a teacher to say, you know what, I've gone through this class, I tried to teach you everything I can, 
yeah, uh, you know, I'm not confident that you're really learning uh, and I'm comfortable with that. No, what they want to say is I'm going to stick with you and help you get through this to a level of understanding. And I want you to be even more confident with the material than I am. I think great teachers always appreciate their students returning only to find that these students have excelled and move on well beyond them. And for saying, I'm so grateful for the education you gave me and I built on it and I've grown beyond. And so it is that Jesus would expect the same. I'm offering a lesson of faith to you, he's saying. I'm teaching you the pathway of wisdom. I'm teaching you this wonderful confidence you can have in a spiritual life. And I hope that you'll take it to another level. I hope that you'll take it to another level and expand upon it, that it becomes even greater within the journey of your life. So the question is, how do we become that spiritually confident? How do we become as confident spiritually as Jesus? Well, the first thing we have to do is do a little healing work. That's right, heal the mind. Heal the mind in a way that is constantly, it is a constantly thinking and bombarded by this physical world. And you know how it is, all these shiny things. And we get, whoa, 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 and we drift off. We get distracted by things. Uh, we are allured away from the spiritual life by the things of the, of the day to day living and, and the day to day world. So, what we want to do is do a little healing work. And this healing work is to move our thoughts to the other side, shall we say, of the boat to move our thoughts to this place of possibilities, of abundant thinking, of a very knowing that all things are working together for good, to have this wonderful sense of affirmation within our mind. Because our mind produces our troubles. And changing our mental and emotional reactions will actually heal our life. Our reactions to the life that we have, you know, when we begin to change those mental and emotional reactions, we can create this healing that happens within our life emotionally as well as physically. You've got to heal that way of thinking. You may at times just need to speak to yourself, I need a mental healing. I need to be healed from these thoughts that are so negative, these thoughts that are condemning, these thoughts that are tearing people down. I need to be healed from that and delivered and set free. I love that wonderful great hymn of the church, sung by in vogue in 1992. Free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> if you're familiar with that song by those great artists, free your mind and the rest will follow. That's so scriptural. That should be a great hymn of the church. We should be singing that over and over again. I need to free my mind. I need to heal my mind. I need to liberate my mind from all this stinking thinking. The stuff that's been weighing us down, I need to liberate my mind so that I can be open to the possibilities. It's so clouded over, it's so full of the junk of the day, it's so full of all this, and I want to liberate my thoughts to set them free. For the spiritual healing is to rearrange our thinking from fear to faith. This is how we get the confidence of Jesus. We're moving our way from any kind of fear to faith. I want you to invite you that during this week, we begin to do a little spiritual check-in. We find, wait a minute, where have thoughts of fear creeped in? Thoughts that simply say there's not enough? Thoughts that say I'm living in a world of separation from God, and maybe God is withholding in some way? These kind of thoughts, I need to free my mind from them. I need this spiritual healing, and I need to move now to thoughts of faith that are there filled with the power of believing all things are possible in my life. Because no one worries if they have a complete sense of security. No one ever worries if they have a complete sense of faith. Our thinking then is based on the convictions that we have in our life or our beliefs that we have in our life. And these convictions are getting me nowhere sometimes. We are like the disciples who've been fishing all night long and we're wondering, wait a minute, my thinking, my thoughts, my beliefs, they're getting me nowhere. Beliefs that say, I can't. Beliefs that say, I'm unworthy. Beliefs that say, I'm not good enough. Beliefs that say, I'm uh, not normal, not well. I'm not as well as society would want me to be. I'm different or I'm unique. 
and that may feel bad. Beliefs that we have that are all surrounded around fears, questions and say, there's not going to be enough, there's not going to be enough, there's not going to be enough, and so I don't know how I can live on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm always worried, and I'm embracing this kind of stress into my life. Those are the empty nets, and they get us nowhere. We're not drawing in the abundance of life, so we've got to heal it and cast those nets. That same process of thinking, that spiritual law that's been at work, we're not putting it in a new direction. Through the power of healing, the freeing of our mind. This then brings us to this wonderful new understanding. Another great hymn of the church. A hymn that should be in every hymn book. Patti LaBelle's, I've got a new attitude. <laughs> oh, look at the lyrics of this great hymn. I'm feeling good from my head to my toes. Know where I'm going and I know what to do. I've tidied up my point of view. I've done the healing work. I've freed my mind. I got a new attitude. Oh, what a powerful hymn that would be if the church would sing that, if the whole congregation would join in this voice. This is my new, I've tidied up my point of view. Oh, and get this. I love this line from that song. Somehow the wires got crossed. Somehow the wire, I'm um, somehow the wires uncrossed, I should say. The tables were turned. I never knew I had such a lesson to learn. I got a new attitude. Wow. That's exactly what happens as we engage this healing process. We get this new, refreshed attitude. Our nets are moved to the other side of the boat, and we're now drawing in that spiritual law, that which we speak is now manifesting for us exactly what we desire. Now, the second thing that we can do as we're learning this spiritual confidence is practice what we know daily, daily. Practice what you know daily. Practice it with within every 24 hour period. Practice it, practice it, practice it. Because we need to learn this faith with such confidence that we can step out, move in faith, and it comes from this great experience we have. I believe for this and I got it. I know I can believe for that and it will come true. I know if I exercise my faith in this way, because of my experience, my practice of believing, it's now growing and flourishing and manifesting in even greater ways. You see, there's the story of Jesus inviting Peter to get out of the boat. Symbol Peter symbolizing faith. He's the great symbol of faith in our journey in our life. And when we look at Peter, it's really describing to us that faith is being called to step out. Your faith is being called. Step out of the place where you are in life. You're stuck in this boat. Step out in being liberated and free to walk on the waters. For this story is not just a story of history or a story of Jesus' life and ministry. It's your story. It's speaking to you. You know, we look at this text of the story. We find that at first the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water and their first response was fear. They saw him walking on the water and they began to question and wondering, is that really you? Is that really you, Jesus? And sometimes that's the way we are in life, where we see and hear of the miraculous. And we go, wait a minute. I don't know. Is that really true? Could that really be happening? I hear your teaching. I hear this, these words, Pastor, but I, is that really true? And so there's this questioning and this wondering and maybe even a fearful challenge to truth. So many people, when they hear things for the first time, they go like, wow, that's a little too good to be true. I remember as uh, a gay man first hearing that God loved me just as I was. Wow. I had grown up in a fundamentalist church that told me God didn't love me over and over again saying God did not love you you are an abomination it is something that God would want to just throw up at and vomit over so looking at the word abomination in that context and I felt so much like well God I, my relationship with you is so different than what I'm hearing from the teaching but the teaching is echoing over and over again this and so when I first heard someone saying God loves me just as I am oh uh, wait, wait, wait I was fearful I was questioning could this be true 
Are you really, you know, and so many of us come to that place where first time we hear something that sounds so good, so wonderful, so powerful, we begin to wonder, is it really true? Is it really something that I can trust in? And so we find this story, the disciples in the boat questioning and wondering. I can imagine the conversation going on the boat. Is that really Jesus? Oh, no, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know how we feel about this. And fear and scared. Should we run and hide? You see, that happens today in our society, in our world, where family members, where people around us want to say, I don't know if it's really true. I don't know if I can believe that. I don't really you should accept that. I don't know. That teaching sounds awfully bizarre because you know we've been taught we must suffer. You know we've been taught about abundance isn't ours. You know prosperity isn't really what we should claim. You know we should be humble and we should uh, live without and just learn to be compliant with these things. You know, don't ask too many questions. Don't be, inquire too much. You know, we have this kind of religion in our world that kind of wants to say, and, and build up this, so we say, fearful challenge to the truth. But there it is. Peter, faith, saying to Jesus, if this is you, then command me or instruct me to come to you. Jesus walking in the water is this symbol of Christ consciousness, of truth and awareness. And when we say, if this is really true, then invite me to step out and put it into practice. Oh, and let me tell you, truth will always invite you to get out of the boat. Truth will always invite you to step out, up your game, move out, take the risk, walk in great faith. Truth will always invite you to do just that. Every day we have to understand that the awareness is centered in our knowing we are a child of God and we must put this into practice or it's just a little value. So if we're not putting this into practice every day, we're saying this truth I embrace, it's inviting me to live the life as a child of God. Then wake up in the morning and say, I'm a child of God. And how you get out of bed then is completely formed by that thought. As a child of God, I am heir to all goodness. I am heir to everything. And I now stand forth and wake up in this very powerful thinking and truth consciousness this truth as symbolized by Jesus walking the water is inviting you to step out when you get out of bed I want you to pretend like you're getting out of a boat that's right swing your legs off of that as if you're crawling out of the boat of life and, and step above the waters of all this chaos and step out of the bed step out of that boat saying I'm walking today in faith I am walking on water. Not I will be, but I am. And that's the confidence that you speak. You speak then of this power within you. You give voice to it. And then you act as if. But if we never take the step of faith and we swing our leg out of the boat and we never really do so with the power of believing in a confidence, we're like Peter. And we begin to sing. And sometimes in life, our faith wavers and we begin to sink. We begin bombarded by the thoughts of the world around us and the physical and doubt rises up and we begin to find ourselves sinking in a space of this wavering faith that's not strong and confident but just know as in the story Jesus reached out, symbolizing this Christ consciousness, this truth that reaches out to you each and every day. That when your faith begins to waver, it wants to pull you back up. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. God is with you and God will never leave and forsake you. Here's the truth that God is good all the time. And even in this moment, no matter what it looks like, God is still good. And the goodness of God is still unfolding for us. That truth will lift us up. That truth will pull us back from that wavering faith that is sinking within our lot. Peter then, he takes this risk. He gets out of the boat. When we realize that Christ consciousness is offering this invitation to know that all things are possible. Let me tell you, I am so in awe of the biblical writers and the beautiful symbolisms and metaphors that they've woven together to express spiritual truth. Let's just look at this for a moment and pause. They're writing a story 
of walking on water. How many of you have seen anybody walk on water? A lot of people think they walk on water. But how many of you have seen anybody walk on water? You see, in the physical realm, that's impossible. So the writers are writing from the very beginning to convey the story of that which we know and think in the world of science is impossible. And yet, it's Jesus, truth, riding above the realms of thought, of impossibilities, and saying, rise, walk above it, get out of your boat, step out in great faith, say you know that you can walk above impossibilities because you are possible. Know that you can rise up above that as the invitation is there, that all things then are available, all things are possible, not some, all. Not just a few, everyone, everything is possible then for your life. Because every day when you wake up and you wake up to the invitation of this divine awareness, this thing called Christ consciousness, this thing called awakening, this thing called truth, this thing called, aha, I get it. This thing called spiritual enlightenment. It's inviting you to demonstrate every day that all things are possible. That's right. Some of us may have said, you know, I had a great moment of faith 20 years ago. I really began to step out in faith and I trusted. I took some steps, I, I, I took a risk, and it really worked. Honey, that was 20 years ago. What have you done to practice today? What did you do yesterday? And what will you do tomorrow that practices this kind of faith that says, I'm looking for a job, I am dressed for success, I am finding my job, I have my job, my job is there, and I'm just waiting for it to unfold because it's already out there. You're looking for healing. I am healed. I feel the healing power within me. I welcome and embrace it. I live as if I am healed. I am now moved to that kind of thinking. My prosperity is mine. I am claiming I am not in the world of lack, but there is enough and I have it and I'm living from that perspective. You see, truth is inviting you to demonstrate this each and every day. For this knowing then comes from experience. You know what I say when I say the word knowing? Knowing, things that you know, things you feel comfortable with, things that you feel at ease with. This knowing comes with experience. What we know to be true is strengthened every time we put it to test. But honey, if you're not putting it to test, what good is it, right? We've got to put it to test. With every test, then we become stronger to the point where we say, wait a minute, I think I got this. Wait a minute, I've done this before and I know how this works. Wait a minute, I now am more comfortable with it. I wasn't before, but I'm really finding my level of comfort. I'm understanding spiritual law is at work. I get it because the power within that I voice out in belief is now at work and spiritual law is that which I sow, that cause that I've created is now bringing about the effect that I so desire. So we have to learn to live each day knowing, not willing, not forcing, but simply knowing. You don't have to force things. You don't have to will things. You don't have to manipulate. You don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. You don't have to beat the gates of heaven, as some people always say, storm the gates with prayer, as if we're just trying to beg and plead. We don't have to beat our chest. We don't have to cry and weep. We don't have to do all these kind of things. We just simply have to know. That's what faith is. Faith is knowing. Faith didn't say, beg a little, plead a little, grovel a little, manipulate God, bargain with the Lord. Faith doesn't say any of that. It's this wonderful access that we have to all the power there is, to all the presence there is. It's there within us and we must say, as you've heard these familiar words, there is one life and that life is God. There is one life. One life. We're all living the one life. We're all living that one life that is God. But you can't fit in there. We know that God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And good is, is what God is, but that statement's not complete until you say, that life is my life now. You've got to embrace it to this moment, to this day, right here and now. 
you've got to understand there is one life. That life is God. And that life that I'm talking about is my life right now. That's how I live it. Right now. I live God in me, through me, around me, for me at all times. I speak then the power within. I speak it with great faith. I speak it with confidence. I speak it with knowing. I speak it with a complete understanding that it is right there, right now, this moment. So would you say this with me? This moment, I know. Say it with me. This, this moment, moment, I know. I am confident. I am confident, confident that God is in me. God is in me. Working through me. Working through me. All around me. All around me. And ever for me. You see, the beauty is then you're not forcing, you're not begging, you're not pleading. You're simply allowing. You're simply knowing is to be true. Peter got out of the boat in the now, in that moment, not waiting, but stepping out in the now. And we're called to do the same right here, this moment, this day, right now. Get out of the boat right now, stepping out in faith and believing, not saying, okay, uh, Peter didn't say, you know, hey, how about next Tuesday, Jesus, uh, I'll run a movie on the water. Uh, how about, you know, maybe uh, on Sunday, uh, you know, or maybe after I've had some prayer time, maybe I'll get out of the boat. You know, Peter got out of the boat when the invitation was made in the now. And Jesus knew if the disciples would cast their nets on the other side, the abundant catch was in the now. It wasn't, oh, cast your nets on the other side and maybe next week you'll catch something. Cast your nets on the other side and maybe in a month from now you'll have some fish. Cast your nets on the other side and someday maybe you'll have that abundance. But no, in each case, it was in the now, in the moment. Jesus knew. That's right. Jesus knew. And yeah, how he knew is what's calling to you to do the same. How he knew, the faith he knew, the confidence he knew, the assurance he had, all of this. He's inviting you to embrace the very same journey and to do so by, first of all, healing your mind, free your mind, and the rest is gonna follow. Practice what we know daily. I got a new attitude and I have worked through all those things and beliefs I've come to this place where now I practice every day this new way of thinking and knowing that you don't have to will it or work it or force it. All you have to do is simply rest in the knowing. This I know. This I know. This I know to be true. When we do, we have confidence. And when the world asks you, what do you believe? What you trust is true. And you are struggling with an answer. You can speak with great confidence. This is my final answer. That's right. I know it. This is how I respond. I am confident. I'm assured. This is my final answer. Amen. Amen.